Coinbase is now available for Bitcoin buying and selling uh, for 13 European countries. So at first they were just in the United States. Now they have moved uh, and expanded services to 13 different European countries. So now, I mean, those countries, they had some options before for buying and selling Bitcoin. Uh, like, you know, Bitstamp uh, is a Slovenian Bitcoin exchange and, and European people can use them. But uh, presumably this will make it easier for people to buy Bitcoin through Coinbase. Uh, certainly in my own personal case, um, I bought a lot of Bitcoin on Coinbase last year. They were like my entry into the space basically last year, especially as the price is moving up, which was really exciting. So, you know, uh, it's... It's, they have a great website, they have a great service. You basically pay from your bank account and you get Bitcoin in like five days. Um, there's, you know, the limits are pretty high for buying Bitcoin. And now it's available in 13 European countries. I'm just gonna list them really quick. Um, Austria, Belgium, Cyprus, Finland, France, Greece, Italy, Latvia, Malta, the Netherlands, Portugal, Slovakia, and Spain. Um, a notable exception there is Germany. Uh, Germany's the biggest economy in Europe, I believe. But, Strongest one, yeah. Yeah, and uh, but apparently CoinDesk, I mean Coin Coinbase, uh, couldn't uh, get into Germany at least not yet. And I think it's because of the regulations there. Their uh, VAT tax um, apparently applies to Bitcoin in Germany which would add on, you know, pretty hefty fees on top of uh on top of bitcoin services in Germany. So, but besides that, I mean, this is this is pretty this is pretty big, honestly. This is pretty bullish news, I I'd, I'd say. Some of the most bullish news that we've seen in several months. Cuz Coinbase is a huge huge um entry point into the bitcoin ecosystem. And now that entry point is available in terms of both buying and selling to all these European countries. So not, I mean, not just buying, but now merchants will be able to more easily adopt uh, Bitcoin because they can instantly exchange it for their country's uh, fiat money, uh, which wasn't really available before in terms of Bitcoin. Um, what do you, what do you think, Evan? It's pretty big news. Definitely. And I think it's good news because, um, you know, Coinbase is obviously, um, you know, in my in my personal opinion, I, it's it seems like the easiest one to use because um, it's not like a full blown exchange. Like you don't have to make a like you don't have to place a bid or like make your own asking price. It just has a set buying and selling price that you can use. So you know, it's not really like an exchange where you actually have to like you know watch the price and work. You just buy and sell Bitcoin whenever you want at whatever price Coinbase has, and. Um, you know, signing up is relatively easy. Um, you don't have to provide all this, these like, like driver's license information, like proof of residence, like you do with ex exchanges like Bitstamp. Yep. Um, so I honestly, I think it's definitely big news, but I don't think it's very surprising because these these qualities that I just listed um, are you know pretty much reasons why Coinbase got so big. So it's only. Um, it's only natural that they would expand into a wider territory and bring that ease of access to a bigger portion of the market. Yeah, and you know, um, I've I've been kind of critical of Coinbase in recent weeks on the podcast. You know, talking about how I think I think it was the lot, the last podcast or the one before that I said they're the the regulators bitch because they implement K KYC and AML regulations to their customers. And, you know, they, if you, if you transact a certain amount of Bitcoin, like a high amount, you know, in the realm of like $10,000, they start asking you what you're doing with the money and where it came from. Um, you can't, you can't really cash out your like seals with clubs, poker winnings onto Coinbase. You can't set, you can't do that because they 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 have to follow the regulations to a T. But you know, I, I've been thinking more about this with with this week's news, and they basically walk a very fine line. They walk a very fine tightrope uh, 
in this business. They're trying to be basically, yeah, the regulator's bitch, but but that's how they stay in business. That's how they um, that's how they are able to expand to more countries by making sure they follow every single regulation. Um, and uh, they, there's a lot of scrutiny on them. They're they're one of the biggest. They're ba- I mean, they basically are the biggest uh, Bitcoin like sellers to the to the public, right? I mean, they're bigger than all these exchanges, um, certainly in the U.S. And they <laughs> they're they're really they're in really uncharted territory. They've been in uncharted territory for years now, and now they're they're finally expanding to more countries. So. I think that that despite the fact that they have to follow all these ridiculous regulations and they subject some of their customers to this stuff, um, what they're doing in the big picture is is pretty freaking huge uh, and definitely supports adoption a, a lot. You know, if people can buy it easily and accept it as payment easily for their for their uh, merchant services, I mean that's that's great. That's great. Expand services to Europe. And, um, and, you know, grow the ecosystem more, really, you know? Right. It's it's kind of a, you know, it's really a dangerous game that they have to play because um, their, their goal, obviously, is to spread Bitcoin adoption. They want people to um, buy Bitcoin. One, one because, you know, they're prob- they probably like Bitcoin. And two, you know, the more Bitcoins they sell, the more money they get. Um, yeah. But, uh, but, yeah. It's a the, genius business model, really, when you think about yeah. it. Yeah, but like like at their core, their their goal is to spread Bitcoin adoption. They want people to get their hands on Bitcoin. So, but Bitcoin is inherently an anti-authoritarian uh, technology, a currency. Um, it's a currency that undermines central banking and all centralized financial financial institutions. So, you you have two choices. You can either go underground and. Um, you know, give sell Bitcoin to a couple thousand people at the most, or you can, you know, you can play the politicians game and follow their rules, and then you have access to seven billion people that you can sell Bitcoin to and spread this anti-authoritarian technology even faster. Uh, but then, but then at the same time, you look like you're bowing down to the bureaucrats, and you're kind of like trying. People might think you're trying to sell Bitcoin out, or you, you might be like a Mount Gox or something. Yeah. 